So I have a secret. I uh, was supposed, I didn't know that I have to prepare any, any slides. So what I did is for my slides, I went on Twitter and I posted and I said, help me, I need help in, in doing a panel about openness in an open way. Just give me your thoughts on how you know, uh, we can foster creativity. And I got lots of tweets. I was going through them right now, and they're very interesting tweets about you know, how basically the Middle East needs to be more open, how you know, problem about censorship or sharing knowledge, etc., etc. So I think, um, in general, the way, the way we look at things, I mean, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, and um, I'm really passionate about entrepreneurship and innovation at the early stage. And I think uh, there's a good analogy that uh, Reid Hoffman from LinkedIn usually gives about entrepreneurship is an entrepreneur, someone who you push off the cliff, and as he's falling down, he needs to build this plane, you know, to really take off before it crashes, and maybe he gets the right wing from angel money or from the left wing from, from customers. I think the way we look at, at you, know, you know, open source in general, the, the open mindset, is when you push that entrepreneur off the cliff, maybe he has already the right, right wing with him because he has been able to use you know, the help of lots of other people in creating those, those tools and technologies. So I think it's really about lowering the cost of innovation, lowering the cost of failure, lowering the cost of failure and lowering the cost of collaboration. Uh, and, and examples from, from, from what we did in Yemli, um, when we first launched, we really wanted to get the community engaged with us. Uh, our goal was to empower the Arabic web. We know that it's a huge and daunting task. We'll never be able to do it on our own. So we, we allowed people to use our tools and build stuff on, on top of that. And what happened after that is kind of an end user, end user innovation. I mean, think about it this way. Uh, you create a toaster, you put it in the market. Uh, a year after now, you, go, you come back and look at it. Oh, it's a microwave now. Someone took it and did something to it and it became a, a microwave. So, for example, in our tools, we create our tools, a lot of people type Arabic, and people took them and did lots of very cool things around them. One of the very cool examples they did was they took our technology and used it in a completely different way. In Lebanon, uh, in, uh, there was an elections uh, happening, and people wanted to know where there was, there was, uh, the electoral vote was. So because our typing technology allows people to, to go back and forth from Arabic to English and from English to variations, for example, of Muhammad and Abdullah, they used that on SMS to be able to figure out where the electoral vote was. This is something that we completely didn't think about. And when we saw that, we thought, huh, there's maybe an opportunity for us, a business opportunity there. So this is an example of how it's openness also, in, in the mindset openness, help you as an organization get innovation from your users, from end user innovation. And this is something that Twitter has been very uh, you know, uh, prominent at. Uh, basically, most of the traffic from Twitter does not come from Twitter itself. It comes from all the partners that we're able to build on top of that. So, and I think, in general, we think about the layers of innovation, and we think about Arabic content. We talk about Arabic content all the time. And it's something that's a big lack in this part of the world, you know, content in our, in our native language. And I think here again, it's, I think we can, I go back to openness, and I go back to the, the, the point of having, lowering the cost of, of failure. Think about it this way. You want to create a, a, a project that will go and find location around you, using mobile phones, right? Like something that has been happening a lot in the, in the, in the US, like Foursquare. Uh, you open your phone and you do that and you find location around you. The problem in the Middle East is that this content does not exist. So it's very costly to go and create this content from scratch. So having something that where you create, where you allow the users to come and you know, contribute to content in an open way that you can reshare through, through something like Creative Commons can help you know, the, the community, not just from a business perspective, but also from a cultural perspective. And you know, again, going back to entrepreneurship, I think there's the touch points on, on different parts. And uh, the other part that I usually like a lot is open education. And open education is a, is a huge space that I think is, is really needed for, for, for all parts of the world. Taking content from a professor from MIT, a professor from Morton Business School, and really packaging them and helping and allowing anyone from their, from their living room to, to reach that content that usually costs you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to, get to, to, to actually uh, reach. So, uh, Again, about openness, there's one example of a, of a friend of mine who, who runs an organization called Architecture for Humanity. And it's basically based on Creative Commons. And this is a, to give you an example that openness is just, not just about digital, although it's, it's the topic of this conference, but it's also a mindset. What they were able to do, what they were able to allow and, and excite uh, architects all over the world to be able to build and come up with design for you know, uh, shelters, for 
community centers in the developing world and having an open, open fashion. What that made is that all the architects were actually taking the, the designs and improving on top of them in a very easy, cheap way and a way that was able to foster innovation, foster entrepreneurship in those parts of the world. Uh, I think to conclude, I just want to say that, it, in my opinion, innovation should be a human right. And I think the, open, the openness and open mindset in general really help us get to that level. Thank you.